Okay. Soul Patrol or uh, Children's, what is it? Calvary Kids Club. Calvary Kids Club. There we go. <laughs> Calvary's Kids Club. You can go. Calvary Kids Club. Is anybody going? Going once? Ah, oh, they're gone. All right. Woo! How about that worship? Amen. 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 Now I'm going to hit you with the fire and brimstone. How's that? Got you all pumped up? Now I'm going to nail you. Just kidding. You. <laughs> all right. Uh, what a wonderful, wonderful morning, wonderful privilege and honor that Pastor Brent, uh, when he asked me to uh, step in and, and preach the message, it just blessed my heart. And this, uh, this message hit me that just right after. And I titled my message, 30 Pieces of Silver. 30 Pieces of Silver. You know, I want to kind of touch on Judas a little bit. And uh, we'll talk about the betrayal. Because when we think of Judas, we think strictly of the one that sold Jesus out, right? That's who we think about. We, we think that he's the one that sold Jesus out and betrayed him. And then uh, after Jesus went to the cross... Judas threw his money back, hung himself, killed himself, right? That's all, about all we know about Judas. We want to talk about the betrayal a little bit. Betrayal is uh, identified in the dictionary. It says the action of being betraying, or the action of betraying one's country, a group, or a person. How many of you have been, re been <laughs> we'll get her back here. How many of you have been betrayed by a loved one, by a friend? We all have, haven't we? We've all experienced some kind of betrayal in our life. And it doesn't feel good, does it? It really hurts. Because when somebody's betrayed, that trust is broken. And that trust is hard to get back, isn't it? Sometimes never gets back. I want to touch a little here on Judas, and this is just what most people know about him. As we see in uh, Matthew 26, 14, that he was one of Jesus' 12 disciples, right? And then we see in Luke 22, 48, that he betrayed Jesus. Matthew 27, 3, we see he killed himself, which I just had mentioned that. And that's most what people know about Judas, but before we go on a little further, I want to take this time to uh, pray. But I have to tell you a story a little bit. Um, yesterday was an awesome morning. And I just got to tell you what, what the Lord did. Cutter, my son, won a guided turkey hunt last fall at the outdoor banquet in Pleasant Hill. And uh, we got to go on that turkey hunt yesterday. And uh, right off the bat, we kind of hit it off with our guide and he was showing Cutter how to work the turkey call. He gave him a new turkey call. So, uh, and old Cutter, boy, he took to it. And so he's, the, the guide's telling him, he says, make as much noise as you want. And he, he's out there just, I mean, just going to town. And I'm thinking, man, you're going to scare away every bird within the next county. All of a sudden, here comes six birds. <laughs> I'm like, whoo! And uh, we, uh, so, so right now, Cutter's got a head this big. You know, he just started out um, <laughs> shaking that turkey call. But then Cutter turned around and there was a bird right behind us. <laughs> so Cutter gets all excited. He goes, there's a bird, there's a bird. Now there's three of us in this hut and we're trying to be really quiet and move around in it so he can get a shot. Well, he, got a sh he shot three times and missed. He did, he did pepper the bird. But anyway... <laughs> I mean, Cutter had a blast, and, and we got out, and we was looking around a little bit, and then we got back in the blind, and, uh, you know, the guy had asked Cutter what kind of sports he played, so Cutter, he, uh, he tells him, you know, he plays hockey, football, basketball, all this stuff, and I'm showing him pictures, and I come across one of them on my phone, it was a picture of me baptizing Cutter in our creek back in 2020. And I said, this was a proud dad moment right here. And, uh, you know, the, the guy, he agreed, and we was talking. And, 
And uh, so the guy had told me that he, he knew God. He knew of God. And uh, so I asked him what his testimony was. I said, share with me your testimony. And he said, well, what do you mean? So I was kind of elaborating there on the testimony, you know. And, and he said, well, I've never been saved. He said, I, I try to be good. He said, I try to do good to everybody, try to volunteer and do what I can and help anybody out. And I, I just told him, I said, you know, works ain't going to get you anywhere. It ain't going to get you to heaven. So I took him to Romans 10, 9, and I said, read that scripture and you tell me what it says. I said, does it tell you that you, you have to do all this work? And this guy literally broke down in tears. And that man surrendered his life to Christ right there in that blind. I'm telling you, we start out the, the day to betray a turkey and get him in there, and we see what God's doing. We see what God did in that blind. Just absolutely awesome. Awesome. Oh. Jesus is good. Amen. 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 All the time. Pray with me, please. Father God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Father, we thank you for this morning. Father, we thank you for your words. And Lord God, I pray, I, I praise you, Lord, for the work that we see being done. Father, I pray over this message this morning, Lord. I pray that your Holy Spirit fills me with these words and that these words build us up. These words encourage us. These words convict us. These words lead us to a closer relationship and fellowship with you. Father, I pray for the one here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior. Father, I pray, I pray, Lord, that, that these words touch them. That your Holy Spirit touches them and convicts them and that they, they repent and surrender to you today, Lord. I pray that you are glorified in everything done here today. Father, we thank you so much for your son, Jesus. And bore our sins to the cross. Bled and died on the cross was buried in a tomb and three days later risen from the dead. So that those who believe in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Father, we thank You so much for Your love, Your mercy, and Your grace. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> so I, I touched just a little bit on what po most people know about Judas. And uh, I do have to apologize. I see some of you looking at the screen. I don't do PowerPoint. I don't do things like that. And I told Pastor Brent, and I said, most of it's because of lack of knowledge. I, I can write down here on my paper and then go from there. That's, that's, that's why I don't do PowerPoints and stuff. So you just got to listen. <laughs> you got to stay awake and you got to block out the smell of that good food back there today. So, Okay. So, here are some interesting things about Judas that people don't know. Judas come from the tribe of Judah, come from the land of Judah. Scholars say that his last name, Iscariot, means a man of Kirioth. And Kirioth is just south of Hebron in the land of Judah. Okay? Jesus' lineage goes back to the land of Judah. We see that in Matthew 1 when it goes through his lineage. So I want you to take note of that, that Judas come from the same land as Jesus. Another thing, Luke 6.16, 6, Judas was picked by Jesus as one of his, disciples, his apostles. And another thing, in Matthew 10.1, we read that Judas, being one of the twelve, was given the authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. Think of that. And Mark 3.14 says that Judas, being one of the twelve, was given the call to preach. 
He's given the call to preach. Now think about that. Judas, being from the same land, being handpicked from Jesus to be his apostle. Judas was given the, the authority to speak out unclean spirits, to heal. Also given the call to preach. A lot of people didn't know that about Judas. I didn't know all that about Judas. But boy, it really put it into perspective of our relationship with Jesus. And I'm going to come back to that in just a moment. The 30 pieces of silver that I wanted to touch on, and why is 30 pieces of silver so significant? It was such a pitiful amount of money, a degrading amount, as talked about in Zechariah 11:12. Exodus 21, 32. Now listen to this. It was the amount of money for a slave, but not only a slave, but a slave who had been gored by an ox. If an owner of that ox, and that ox gored a slave, that owner had to pay the slave's owner 30 pieces of silver. Think of that. Jesus, the priceless Messiah, was sold for the price of a slave. The price of a slave. And from that moment on, he sought to betray him. Judas was seeking to go against Jesus and carry out his quest to personal satisfaction of the deal that he had made. Listen, e evil motives, motives leave us open to being used by Satan. And you may be sitting there thinking, well, yeah, evil motives. Yeah, that, that's pretty common. Pretty, pretty common thinking. But listen, Judas had a plan. The Messiah was supposed to be the one that was going to come back and save Israel. But a lot of them thought that he was going to be the one that conquered Rome. So that free the Israelites from, from the, uh, the pressure and being underneath Roman soldiers. But Judas figured out that Jesus' kingdom wasn't that. It was spiritual and it was leading us out of, of evil. And it went against what Judas was hoping. Judas betrayed him. In 15, in Matthew 26, 15, he says, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him to you? Now why do I talk about that? Why do I, why do I point out that Judas was so close to Jesus? Why do I point out that, that he sold him for the price of a slave? And why do I point out that he uh, was seeking out to carry, carry out the quest of his personal satisfaction. Why do, I, why do I hit those points? I hit those points because there are people sitting in pews in churches all over the world that have those same things that Judas did. People get the idea that, that just because I'm in church, because I'm close to Jesus, because uh, I'm not who I used to be, that I'm good. But there are so many people with personal, personal directions in churches. And if you've ever been a part of a business meeting in churches anywhere, that really comes to light. Because we have our own personal vendetta of what we want to do. This is the way we've always done it. Those words will kill a church faster than anything. When we hold on to our own personal belief of what we want, then we are selling Him out. 
30, our 30 pieces of silver may be a pew that we've had in the sanctuary for years that we don't want to get rid of. Our 30 pieces of silver may be, may be the guitar up here. You take that guitar out, I'm not coming back. <laughs> Josh is back here going, like, leave my guitar out of this. It's, it's a Gibson. I'm a Fender guy. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. But it's, it's those simple little things that we will sell out the work. Now, how about this? Sunday morning rolls around. Five, ten minutes, twenty minutes more asleep rather than being at Sunday school, rather than being at church. Your 30 pieces of silver was your sleep. Dads, dads all across the land have many 30 pieces of silver. The sun's looking good today. I bet the fish are biting. I'm not going to church. The wind is right. My deer stand will be perfect today. I'm not going to serve. I'm not going to, to tell someone about Jesus. I've got to be in that deer stand. I've got a ball game today. I'm going to cheer and that's it. Jesus Christ has to be our center. No matter where we are. Cutter goes to Springfield to play hockey. And I love to watch him play hockey, but the, some of the best times is our travel up there for his one day of practice and the visit. And Cutter can tell you that he's not just going up there because he loves hockey and because he's good at it but it's because the Lord gave him the ability to do it. Amen. And there's a reason for that. And there's a reason he knows is because I told him. And it wasn't me, it was Christ through me. And that's what us, us dads have to do. You know what, we can have our hobbies, we can do things, but when they become up here in front of Jesus, that's our 30 pieces of silver. We're selling Jesus out for our 5-10 minutes personal satisfaction. Thirty pieces of silver. Moms. I picked on dads. Now I'm going to pick on moms. How many of you have heard the happy wife, happy life? I have yet to find that scripture. <laughs> Con contrary to a pastor's wife's belief, <laughs> it says wives submit to your husbands. It doesn't say wives be a slave to your husbands. But it says to submit to your husbands. It says to submit to your husbands. And the husbands are to submit to Christ. You are to submit to your husband just as the church is to submit to Christ. A lot of times, we as parents, we will take our cell phones and spend more time with them than we do our children. Or spend more time with them than we do our spouse. When that cell phone alarm goes off, we jump to attention. But when our spouse bellers in the other room, we're like, eh. That phone has become more to you than your spouse. It's your 30 pieces of silver. You sold out. 
rather than glorifying God and follow Him as He says. You're going for that personal satisfaction. A lot of times we, we will even seek opportunity not to share Christ. We will avoid certain people because we don't want to share Christ with them. Maybe because of the way they look. Maybe because of the way they act. We don't want them in the family. Right? A lot of times that's what we'll think. Sometimes when we look at people, we think that even Jesus can't save them. And that's not true. We have opportunities everywhere. Everywhere. You have opportunities sitting right here in this church right now to share Christ. And you know, we, we need to share the Gospel every day with each other. Believers, unbelievers, we need that Gospel spoken to us every day. We need that constant reminder that we have a Savior in Jesus Christ that saves us from hell. You know, first few weeks of youth, we talked about the first we started out as, as who is Jesus? The next was what does Jesus save us from? And where does He save us to? If we could actually grasp the concept of weeping and gnashing of teeth in a fiery furnace, a bottomless pit, a place where no, no light resides. If we could actually grasp that and the importance of that, we would never hesitate to tell somebody about Jesus Christ. But so many times we will come to church just to fill our tanks. I did my good deed for the day. Now I can go on and live as a heathen and tell everybody I'm a Christian. You can tell everybody that you serve in this committee at church. You pray for this person. You do this person. This for this person. Judas could tell everybody, I was one of the hand-picked chosen apostles. I had to call to preach. I had the authority to cast out demons. But my heart wasn't right. That's what he would say. The prophets, the prophecies were fulfilled through Jesus Christ. Jesus knew. He knew which one would betray Him when He handpicked Him. He knew which one would betray Him when He gave them the authority. He knew all that. But He still loved Him. He still treated Him like the others. And knowing that, how many of you can say that about someone in your family, knowing how goofy they are, or how bad they are, or how, how they've betrayed you, or a friend's betrayed you? How many of you can say that, that you know what, I still love them through that? Knowing what kind of stupid plan they're going to do, I can still love them through it. Not very many. Not very many, because our patients are, are slow. I was sharing with the youth this morning that, that back when, uh, when I got saved right here, and I was taking all this information home and sharing it with my wife, and she was a heathen and wouldn't believe me. You know I'm out of arm's reach when I said she's a heathen. Okay. <laughs> but, but that was... I went to Pastor Bill and I, and I said, Bill, 
I said, she's never going to get it. I said, you tell the truth, I take it home and tell her, and she never listens. And he said, do you ever think about shutting your mouth? <laughs> it took a lot for me to love him through that because I wanted to send him to the moon when he told me to shut my mouth. But he was right. I had to get out of the way and let the Spirit do the work. All I had to do was love her through it. All I had to do was love her through it. And she had to make that choice herself. Listen. Your relationship with Christ. I want you to stop and think about that right now. It's your relationship with Christ. Does it, does it look like the other 11? Or do you relate with a lot of what I said here today? Are you so ingrained with your personal, uh, your personal direction and the way you want it that you would sell Jesus out for whatever hobby, whatever habit, sleep, whatever it is? What are you hanging on to? What are you hanging on to? Now's the time to get rid of it. Now's the time to get rid of it. And you know, we don't realize it, but we're, we're kind of better off than Judas. After everything went down, Judas regretted what he did and threw money back at the, at the leaders. And he went off and killed himself. Whatever you're doing, whatever is that 30 pieces of silver, you can repent. Repent. And seek his forgiveness. And you know what? He'll forgive you. He will, he will forgive you. He will love you. His ways are not our ways. His ways are not our ways. His ways are so much more. I want to ask you this question I want to send home with you. Are you a true disciple and follower of Christ? Or are you an uncommitted pretender? Are you a true disciple and follower of Christ? Or are you an uncommitted pretender? Listen. I loved, I love that song, Let Me Tell You About My Jesus. I love that song. You know, I never even dreamed. Now, I prayed. I prayed for an opportunity, but I didn't dream it would happen in that blind yesterday. Never dreamed it. If you are totally sold out to Christ, you will tell people about your Jesus. You will tell people about your Jesus. You will tell, him, tell them about how He saved you from drinking, lust, all the main things you can think of. But one thing I like to tell about them about my Jesus is He'll never love me any less. You know, we... We are so weak. We are so weak. Jesus tells us in the Scripture, says the Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And I, I was thinking about that this week, about you know, just how, how easy it is to, to let a hobby or, or whatever become a, a priority to us. How easy it is. And then I got to thinking about people in the Bible... I mean, what he says that the, the spirit is willing and the flesh is weak, 
it's all through the Bible. All through the Bible. Adam and Eve. Their flesh was weak. Think about that. David, man after the Lord's heart. His flesh was weak. Sherry, your flesh is weak. Brent, your flesh is weak. But my Jesus, our Jesus, is strong. He is the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and the victor of victors. Why would we trade him for 30 pieces of silver? As we draw to a close, if you have never given your life to Christ, if you cannot answer wholeheartedly that you know where you're going when you leave this world, don't leave this building. Don't leave this building until you talk to one of us and, and let us tell you about Jesus and His saving power. If you are sitting in this pew and have been sitting here for five days or, or 50 years, and when I spoke about a true follower of Christ or an uncommitted pretender, repent today. Repent and vow to live for Him. Put Him first. And you know, with that thought, each and every one of us ought to be sitting here because we're all weak. We all ought to be sitting here praying for forgiveness and repenting. Today is the day. Today is the day. What are you going to worship? What are you going to follow? Today is the day. Bow with me, please.